Mr. Swarbrick, you was the Sigma team leader of the International Peer Review Assessment of the Court of Accounts of the Republic of Moldova. Can you give us some details, please, who initiated the assessment and why? Thank you, Violetta. Um, the, the, the peer review was initiated by the Court of Accounts itself. Uh, I think the, the key reason for doing this is to, they want to identify and address uh, and help them improve as an institution, to strengthen the institution, uh, and also to demonstrate to their stakeholders that they are a credible and a robust institution doing an effective job for the citizens of, of Moldova. So I think it's, uh, from my perspective, it's a reasonably courageous and brave move to want to be reviewed by some external independent uh, parties uh, and experts to find out where you are in terms of uh, the expectations for uh, an institution like the Court of Accounts uh, in meeting the expectations of international standards and uh, the expectations that uh, similar organizations and bodies in EU member states are expected to achieve. Is it a common practice for supreme audit institutions from EU countries or from EU neighborhood countries to undertake such kind of peer reviews? Yes, um, to, it's mainly driven by the, 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 the institutions themselves about wanting to be subject to peer review. And uh, a number of uh, institutions in the EU member states, in the enlargement countries and neighborhood countries to the EU, have undertaken or been subject to peer reviews. Uh, generally, they're looking to find out how they're doing against the international standards and the expectations. Um, and to help them improve as institutions to become better, stronger, more credible institutions. So yes, I think it is a common practice. Not every institution has been subject to it, but those who I think are looking to be improved are generally the ones that under, and subject themselves ultimately to a peer review. And uh, what is the importance of the peer review for the Court of Accounts and for the public uh, financial management of the country in general, in your opinion? From my perspective, the importance of the, the peer review for the Court of Accounts is that it helps them improve, helps them uh, see where they are in, line, in terms of the expectations of international standards for supreme order institutions, helps them to see where they are in terms of the expectations of good practices, for similar institutions across the EU um, and helps them to develop and continue to improve uh, and then uh, and ultimately identify areas where they need to improve as well. And in terms of the public financial management system in Moldova, I think it's, it's a crucial element is to have a strong court of accounts and anything that can help the court of accounts to improve how it does its work uh, how it uh, supports and audits the public financial management system uh, within Moldova is, is, is fundamentally important from my perspective. So I think it has a crucial, crucial role for helping this, the Court of Accounts to improve so that the Court of Accounts can help the country's public financial management system strong, improve and be strengthened. And what are the results of the international assessment of the Court of Accounts and the overall conclusion of the external evaluation? Well, the overall conclusion of the, the peer review and our, our assessment is that the, the Court of Accounts is on the right path. Um, it's moving in the right direction to meet the expectations of the international standards and the expectations of what a good SI in the EU does, a, a supreme order institution does in the EU. Um, there, in, it's in a reasonably well-developed position in certain aspects. But there are some areas which need to be improved, areas that need to be strengthened. Uh, there are aspects where practices need to be embedded. And uh, there is certain risks still within the situation, within the, the system, which could have a negative impact if these practices are not embedded ex thoroughly within the Court of Accounts. But overall, you know, we are very positive about the results of the peer review. Uh, we see that the court has developed well and is, has got this improvement focus on how it does its work and is looking to improve. And uh, we are very supportive of them in, in taking that step forward and, and moving forward on that journey. And what are the main re recommendations of the peer review? 
Um, well, there are a number of there was a there's a significant number of recommendations in the, the report, but in terms of key themes, we think that there are aspects around the legal framework of the court that need to be improved um, to strengthen its independence, to give it the appropriate independence and status as an institution to effectively do its job. Um, whilst the legal framework is in many ways is adequate. There are some issues around its financial independence and its own organizational and operational independence, which do impede it in doing its or meeting its mandate and delivering its, uh, its work as it would, you would expect it to be the case. So, you know, these are fundamental for helping the, these, addressing these issues around the legal framework are fundamental for ensuring that the Court of Accounts can organize itself to efficiently and effectively to do its job uh, and meet the, the needs of the stakeholders, such as the Parliament and the citizens of Moldova, in delivering an effective audit service to the country. Aside from the independence issues uh, and the legal framework, um, the other key recommendations are that there's still some work to do to embed good audit practices. They have been developed uh, and they are being implemented but they need to be embedded and institutionalized within the institution to ensure that there's a quality audit services provided. So areas around strengthening the quality management system are important. And finally, I think there's uh, still some steps to be taken in terms of uh, developing the communication and engagement of the Court of Accounts with its external stakeholders to ensure that the messages uh, of the Court of Accounts are widely understood for people to understand exactly what the role and responsibilities of the court accounts are and for them to uh, understand the results of their audits and the work of the court of accounts. So those are the sort of key recommendations that I saw from the, we, what we found from our peer review. And uh, in your opinion, who is responsible for implementation of recommendations? The Court of Accounts or the other institution as well? Well, uh, there's, uh, the Court of Accounts clearly has respons some responsibility in implementing the recommendations of the peer review. But the Court of Accounts cannot do this in isolation. The Parliament is a key stakeholder here to support the Court of Accounts in moving forward the legal framework of the Court of Accounts, in supporting the Court of Accounts around how the implementation of recommendations that they make uh, through encouraging and holding uh, other parts of the, the public service accountable for implementing those recommendations. So the Parliament has a clear and important role here in supporting and working with the Court of Accounts to take forward some of these recommendations. Additionally, we see that the, uh, the ministries, the government, have a clear role in working with the Court of Accounts and addressing some of the recommendations of our peer review. For example, how do they respond to the reports of the Court of Accounts? How are they taking forward the recommendations of the Court of Accounts? Are they working with the Court of Accounts to understand what those recommendations mean and how they can improve the public service for the citizens? And finally, I think there is clearly a role here for other external stakeholders like the NGOs to work with, understand what the Court of Accounts are doing, uh, using their work to encourage, to put influence, to pressure uh, public service to improve, to develop its services effectively and to make better use of public money, ultimately. The Republic of Moldova has conferred the EU candidate country status and should undertake a range of actions in order to meet the European community standards and requirements within the European agenda of the country. Are these recommendations of the peer review aligned with these requirements? Absolutely. I think uh, uh, the benchmarks and criteria we use for, using, for conducting the peer review are the international standards for supreme order institutions, which are the international standards for any institution such as the Court of Accounts across the world. And also the criteria such as what is good EU practice in, in similar institutions. So these are the criteria we'd expect for any of these type of institutions in the world, but the requirements of the EU to candidate status and through the, the specific negotiating criteria that are in place for becoming a member of the EU specifically require uh, the Court of Accounts and similar institutions to meet these expectations of in the international standards for supreme order institutions. So they're clearly aligned. The criteria we use for conducting the peer review and, and 
bringing forward recommendations for the Court of Accounts are clearly aligned with the requirements for an EU candidate country. And finally, can you explain uh, us, in your opinion, what is the role of a supreme audit institution for the public management system of a country? Well, I believe that the, the role of a supreme audit institution within a country is a crucial part of the public financial management system. We citizens all want public services that are delivered efficiently, effectively, and use the hard-earned taxpayers' money in a, in a way that you would expect them to do it. So there needs to be checks and balances in the system to ensure that the government, the executive, ministries, agencies all use public money efficiently, effectively, economically, and in line with the expectations of the, the law. And the Court of Accounts is a crucial element in providing some of that oversight and the check and balance on that system. Uh, they are there to ultimately to help protect the citizens, citizens, taxpayers' money, uh, to assess whether the government is using that money appropriately, is using it efficiently and effectively, and is reporting uh, uh, that effectively as well. And, hold, and to an extent, helping hold the government and the executive to account and providing the parliament with information and other stakeholders with information with which they can hold the government and the various public service to account. I also see they have a crucial role in helping government public services to improve, um, to help them providing recommendations about how they can improve the systems, the practices, how they can make more efficient use of public money. And ultimately, this is for the benefit of all citizens. So I see them as a fundamentally crucial part of the, of the public financial management system and the wider governance system of, uh, on the, in the public service uh, ultimately completely together.